car fires on Facebook Market. Fasten your seat belts and tighten up your helmets because we're about to get into this. Well, whoever done this to this car tells me that you've never played outside as a child growing up, you have very awkward conversations with the opposite sex, and you spend a lot of time alone eating Uncrustables in your mother's basement while being surrounded by your participation trophies. I never thought somebody could make a Chevrolet Sonic look any worse than Chevrolet did, but here we are. This build here is brought to you by Peyote Gummies, helping you make bad decisions one gummy at a time. You know it's gotta be peyote because there ain't no way in hell the Devil's Lettuce helped out with this situation. I just wanna know what you were thinking when you built this, what brought this to mind, there's something you had to alter your state of mind when you decided to do this. I think I need a gummy so I understand this one. Now we all know Mater from Cars, well this is his cousin Mitchell, a lot of you guys have never heard of Mitchell. We're going to clue you in on Mitchell. Mitchell's the guy that goes to the family reunion, hits on every one of his female cousins, and asks them out. Now keep in mind, it's not only family reunions, he also does this at the funeral home. So the moral of the story here is, stay the hell away from Mitchell. Mitchell is weird. Oh dear lord, this person wears a helmet and packs around crayons in their own damn coloring book. The fact that you paid somebody to do that distressed paint job on a Honda Civic. On a damn Honda Civic tells me you got to be wearing a helmet. There's no and ifs or buts about that. And the fact that you put this thing on hydraulics as well. Oh, dear God, I got a headache. First thing that comes to mind when I see this little Mustang is the scene from the Beverly Hillbillies when Jeff Robo Dean was told, you ought to buy you a big flashy new car. He went out and bought all the stuff to lift his old raggedy pickup truck. Well, this guy here, when they told him he needed to buy a real Mustang, he went out and bought all the stuff to lift his Mustang, all these swampers and all that good stuff. And we have this monstrosity right here. Now, I'm not saying it was poorly done. It looks like it was done nicely, nicely built, but why? So, so this is a one-of-a-kind car located in Rogersville, Tennessee. And for the love of God, I hope it stays in Rogersville, Tennessee. What in the hell is going on here? Even the camera didn't want to cooperate with taking the pictures. That's why they look like shit. This right here is definitely screaming that it is a product of an uncle, brother, sister, cousin, inappropriate relationship. Whoever thought that, that was a good idea to bolt all that stuff onto this car really needs to go have their head examined. I really hope they didn't think this car looked good when they got done. This is the most hideous old cutlass I've ever seen in my freaking life. You should be thrown in jail for defacing that work of art. When I look at this car, what I see is the beginning of a very crazy horror movie involving a crazy looking vehicle with like the Jeeper Creeper dude. But you know what? I, this is not a bad looking rig and you know, I don't like lifted stuff. You all know that I share that all the time. But I would actually drive this, but I'd go get me like one of them Jeeper Creeper masks and just drive around and just scare the everyone the hell out of everybody I can. Just because, you know, why? Why not? It's funny to make people's plaque move sometimes. What in the crazy Whitaker family is going on here? What was going on in your inbred mind when you thought it was a good idea to mate a damn little cargo trailer with a damn Dodge Caravan? Cletus, please leave your sister alone. We don't need any more of this shit happening. Oh dear lord, what in the crazy helmet wearing, window licking Karen do we got going on here? All of your decision making privileges have been revoked. You should not be allowed to make any decisions on any kind of work or authorize any kind of work whatsoever if this is the kind of crap you're going to authorize. Tell me you want to keep a van that you're trying to sell without telling me you want to keep a van. And the fact that you got Barbie hanging out there on the antenna, that's just sick. I think I need some Pepto Bismol because I think I'm going to be sick after looking at this van. Ugh. Well, what we got here is the first ever episode of Papa Smurf's Pimp My Ride. Oh dear God, every one of the helmet wearing window lickers is on the loose and they are building cars. God help us all. This is the crap that happens when they give away participation trophies. And everybody's always, oh, don't criticize their work. They'll never do something again. Well, some people should have it criticized so they never do shit again. Because this here never needs to happen again. Stop giving away participation trophies and telling people things are good looking when they're not. Well, this is not Redneck's work. This is not Hillbilly's work. This here is absolutely just wrong. The village idiots all got together and decided they're going to build a car. Why would you do that to this poor Oldsmobile? You, only thing you've accomplished here is made the ugliest damn thing I've ever seen. Now, if you're going to do that, at least make sure the fit and finish is right. So you quit destroying the fender that's probably six inches of fiberglass every time you open the door. Don't ever do this shit again. And if you, no. 
just, just, just put down your tools, smack also your Also known as the USS Compensator. What are you compensating for, a small weenie? This limo here just made every redneck in America choke on his jaw and gave him a chubby. And you just know there's a bumper sticker on the back that says Panty Dropper. Well, they definitely put together a good business strategy here when they built this one, because every redneck in America's got this thing booked for the next 30 years for prom. And they also rent this thing out for redneck weddings when you get married at the Waffle House. Holy hippie hell and a nightmare, this cannot be unseen. Whoever was responsible for doing this right here was eating peyote like Scooby Snacks, for God's sakes. There is no reason for that monstrosity. What did this poor little Volkswagen ever do to you to deserve this kind of treatment? What in the Swedish meatball diarrhea sauce that we got going on here with this Mad Max reject looking thing you built here? If your objective was to offend an entire country, you have succeeded. You have created something that nightmares are made out of for the Swedish people. What in the hell were you thinking, Riri? Well, on this episode of Arts and Crafts of Crackhead Bob, he brought in Peyote Dave to give him a hand building this. Now, this gentleman claims in the description that he built this vehicle to go 200 miles an hour. Yeah, I said 200 miles an hour. Man, I wouldn't want to go 2 miles an hour in this thing right here. This thing is a complete, unalive you machine. Well, this is definitely a first. I've never seen a car trying to coat itself in Pepto-Bismo. It kind of all the hurt and the stomach upset from looking at the damn thing. Why? Just why would you even think... Then you, the, the taillights were ugly enough. Why did you have to add another set? Jesus. And the stacks. What the hell's going on with the stacks on this thing? Oh, for God and hillbilly hell. Oh, dear God. I don't even think we can blame this on the natty light drinking crowd. I think this is worse than what they could have done. Why? Why? What? what? Really? That's the highlight. Look, they put an arrow there. It shoots flames out the side. That's what they're proud of. It shoots flames out the side. The instant cigarette lighter. Stick your head out the window and light it. That's what they want to be concerned with about this car. And look, the damn gas tank ain't even attached. They got damn ratchet straps holding the damn thing together. What in the absolute F? Well, boys and girls, on this episode of Arts and Crash to Crackhead Bob, this is a piece he likes to call puke. You know, at first... I kind of was thinking, I wonder what this looked like before it was all mangled up the way it is. But then a rational thought came over me and just told me 100% there was never nothing that was ever going to be good about this. What in the hell kind of white trash shit pickle is this? I think Cletus been chasing his sister again and from the looks of this car he caught her. Whatever village idiot or idiots that was responsible for this here, you need to just go put yourself back in your padded room, put your helmet on, get your crayons. What'd you do? Just cut the back off and literally move it back, fill it in with some sheet metal. Then you put a futon mattress in the back, and you're proud of that. This guy's looking to trade for a cargo trailer or an open trailer. He said he's moving out of state. <laughs> After seeing this car, I kind of see why he's moving out of state. His neighbor's done kicked his ass out the neighborhood. And then kicked him out the state for having his POS parked in their neighborhood. This is not a rat rod. This is junk, man. It's junk. I said, call for Gary. Gary! Gary! We really all want to know what in the hell was you thinking, dude? I mean, what in the hell kind of crazy tractor shit is this? Gary, have you been sampling the fermented corn? Have you just been hanging out with Natural Light and his buddies? Was you definitely setting out to build the biggest what the up on the planet? Because if so, Mr. Gary, you have definitely succeeded on that. Definitely need to look old Gary up and go sit down and have a beer with him and pick his brain about what's going on in there. What in the fiberglass hell meth lab is going on here? Dude, you know, Pontiac did a fine job on their own design. They didn't need you to try to improve on it. You know, the Trans Am was okay. It really didn't need any help from you. I mean, dude, for real, I mean, why? And then what the hell's going on with the back end of this car? There's nothing that even looks remotely cool, but the front end's even worse. Oh, for the love of God, just stop. Just drop your tools, stop, and just leave things alone. Yep, nobody believed Bob when he said he was going to build him a rocket ship to leave the planet to get away from his wife. But, you know, after he got about halfway built, they decided to reconcile. So he no longer needs the rocket ship to escape the hell called marriage. So anyway... If you're looking to escape, this might be a good buy for you for $8,800. Get a hold of Bob. It's ready to rock. Oh, holy inbred kissing cousins. What do we have here? A cut shortened wagon. A 59 Ford wagon. 
I just gotta know what was going through your head when you sat down. And, did you think this out, or was you just really here, but dirk 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 going through your brain, thinking you were going to make it any better? You know, I didn't think anybody could make a 59 Ford look any worse, but you have proven me wrong, and you have shown me that you can absolutely make a 59 Ford look worse than an egg from the factory. Oh, for God's sakes, man, go away, leave things alone. Well, on this episode of Arts and Crafts with Crackhead Bob, fresh out of the shop, this ugly SOB. What in the absolute hell were you trying to accomplish here? Make the ugliest little rat rod pickup truck you could make on the entire planet? This thing is freaking hideous. I, I just, no. And I think Crackhead Bob had something to do with the pricing here. Because who in their damn right mind thinks that that's okay and that kind of price is okay? Holy retarded Mustang with the dual stacks and the flatbed. You know you're redneck when you got a Mustang and you don't want made in a flatbed. And you went and robbed the neighbor's Jeep's angry grill because you wanted to make this thing look angry. It's already angry. You didn't have to put the angry grill on it to make it look even more angry. This is just the dumbest shit I've ever seen. Oh, for God's sakes. This is the... Why? Absolutely why, dude? Why? Well, on this edition of Meth Head Busters, let's see exactly what we got going on here. We obviously have somebody who never understood the meaning of you can go a little too far when you're doing something. However, there's some cool things about this, but some of these things here are just why. I can appreciate them thinking outside the box, but in this case, I think I wish they would have stayed in the box. Seller says needs TLC runs, drive, stop. Here we have the Meth Head Barbie Edition Camaro. So you better act fast. This is very limited edition. He's got a lot of buyers in line to buy this one right here. Five grand. It's a steal. All you can do is just look this car, take it in, look at everything, and just have that same universal question. Why would you do that to this, this car? Here has a 350 V8 with custom rear fenders and topper, dubbed the orange crate. This is what happens when Grandpa's got too much free time on his hands, and he likes to spend a lot of time in the accessory department that the local auto zone. Well, at least it's already got a V8 swap done. You might be able to undo some of the other crap. The salvage title when the seller says, Why spend $35,000 on a new side-by-side -side when you can own that beast at one-tenth of the price? Well, me personally, I don't see spending $35,000 on a new side-by-side, -side, let alone $3,000 for this piece of crap right here. I put more faith in buying a side-by-side -side from Wish.com before I'd buy this thing. I can almost assure you this would not be allowed on any ATV trail. One, the width is going to be too wide, and I'm sure there's some other restrictions that I don't know about. Here's got a 400 small block, free fit turbo training. This car originally was a four-door, now it's a no-door, no-roof kind of car that needs a fuel pump, and it's been sitting. So essentially, he's saying he wants $14,000 for a total car that is not roadworthy, doesn't run, and it's probably not structurally safe for you being in the damn thing going down the road. So says this vehicle here was built by a 90-year-old man to pass the time. When you have a touch of being senile, this is kind of what happens when you go to build something. Because I don't believe the guy remembered if he was working on a golf cart or an S10, or if he was working on a car from his teenage years. This one here is a one-of-a-kind custom. It took him three years to build. Got 47,000 original miles. You know, poor Papa Smurf. Life was hard for him after the show. So he just went into pimping. You know, this is definitely Papa Smurf's ride right here. Come on, I can't be the only one to see Papa Smurf and Gargamel actually hanging out, getting along, listening to some gangster rap, riding up the road, looking for the next club. Oh, this poor caddy has been so violated in its build. I, there's not even words to describe how much this poor caddy has been hurt. What in the hillbilly meth lab is going on here? There, what? Glass trunk lid? What in the hell are you doing here, people? This is crazy. And you just know by looking inside that car, it smells like garlic butt and onion. You can almost smell it from here. Pay attention to this one here, boys and girls. This one here has a lot, and I mean a lot of things going on right here. This car definitely a what the F is going on here. The proportions on this car, nowhere near right. I want to kind of dig the back end of this car right here. If you look at it from this angle here, it looks kind of nice from back here. But it just gets all crazy and just nothing flows. Nothing flows at here all. Here we have what's left of a 1972 Jeep CJ7 for $4,000. I know he was going with the whole rat rod thing here. Rat rods are cool. Love them. But I think this guy here missed the mark just a little bit. And just really just made a... Um, Something that would unalive you pretty quickly. Because uh, it is LS swapped. And I think it might be fun. Definitely want to wear a helmet, fire suit, and 
pay your life insurance. Here we got a slow 91 Buick Roadmaster wagon for $2,500. Brought to you by Redneck Engineering. This is the epitome of business in the front, party in the back. There are so many things gone wrong here with this build. I mean, we could be here all day on just this vehicle here alone. Now, if you really want to go see this car in person and check it out for yourself, I'm sure it can be viewed at any Home Depot or Lowe's. Maybe even a Menards if you're lucky. Just look for the owner in the scrap lumber or the window department. Here we got a 38 Plymouth sedan for $4,500. This is a full custom job here. Now, I don't know what to really think of this. You look at it some ways, it's kind of cool. You look at it other ways, it's not at all. But, you know, I get it. Cars are art. People's interpretation of what they think their cars should look like. The back half, I kind of get what they're going with. When you start looking at that front fender, they kind of started fading off in the design department here. Well, if you enjoyed today's video, the best of the what the Fs, make sure you like, subscribe, and share, and we'll see you guys in the next one.